billions of dollars to hedge funds for speculation. Uh, so you need the you need the Fed involved. Uh, you need the, um, uh, the the banks have to be really closely regulated at a local and a state level. They're at a state and national level. Uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission has to weigh in to stop the speculation. There's a huge amount of speculation that drove the subprime lending uh, crisis. We have to do something about our trade deficit, which is about $900 billion right now, $288 billion of it with China. We absolutely must stop that. We have, to stop, we have to stop borrowing money at the rate we're borrowing. Because we're borrowing money from China to finance the war, which is not productive spending. So what's happening is our, our debt keeps going up, and we're more exposed to uh, our, in our loans to, like, China, for example. So, uh, you know, you have to see the, the connection between, between the value of the dollar, um, our energy policy, our uh, trade policy, um, and, and, we, and, and the responsibilities of the Fed and the Securities and Exchange Commission. They all fit in together. So, you know, as a president, what, what I would be ready to do is to, um, is to have real oversight by the Fed, uh, which, which really, I think, isn't, you know, it, we have to look at their charter again, because the Fed has, there's a lot of questions raised about the Fed's uh, responsibility in our economy. Uh, I mean, you know, they're, they're not a branch of government, any more than Federal Express is a branch of government. And so we... We also make, must make sure that the Security and Exchange Commission has real oversight over Wall Street. They think basically it's an anything goes casino economy right now. But we, but we have China has the largest foreign currency reserves in the world right now. Well, why wouldn't they? Too, look right. at the trade deficit. And China trade. Second, hello. And then second of all, they on a monthly basis they're buying our T bills, T notes, uh, which is basically taking possession of our economy. How would you go about dealing with? Uh, Easy. Uh, Government spends money into circulation. That's why I talked about. You spend money for infrastructure. Infrastructure includes roads, bridges, water systems, sewer system, rail, and includes health care and education. You, you prime the pump of the economy. You increase productivity. And then you're not in hock the banks. You're not borrowing the money to do these things. And you slowly start to pay off the debt with increased monetary resources. But you have to change the trade laws. We, we, have, to, we have to rebuild our manufacturing base. One of the reasons why the dollar ends up getting, uh, it becomes in a more volatile situation, is we don't have a manufacturing base. We're not making goods here. You know, there's only so many hamburgers you can sell, okay? You know, and, and, and so I'm, I'm saying that I want to rebuild our manufacturing base as well and have new trade policies and have policies of, of real oversight over Wall Street and its activities. Then, and, and also a new energy policy, move towards sustainability. All these, because, you know, right now, at, at OPEC's meeting, yep. you know, uh, Venezuela and Iran are talking about shifting away from the dollar as, you know, by which to take uh, the purchase of oil. This was one of the underlying discussions that was going on during the attack on Iraq, by the way. You know, I mean, lest we forget. You know, so, I mean, when I saw that, I thought, whoa, uh, because, uh, you know, the, the U.S. moved on Iraq. It was all about oil, as we know. So we've got to, you know, this is a time when we should be talking about dollar policy. So I hope, I mean, I, I, I think I addressed it in some way in terms of the dimensions of it. I, okay, thank you. Okay, yes. Did you have a question? Yes. Oh. <laughs> um, my name is Marlene, and I'm a new writer, reporter for the Gothic Times, the school newspaper. I was just wondering, what were your reasons for agreeing to come to New Jersey State University? Well, my uh, deputy campaign managers from this area, Vin Gopal, so Vin says, come on. Well, I, I could also speak with you a little bit later, too. And we, had, and we, also, we also have a, a great organization over here that encouraged uh, me to come. And, you know, I recognize some of the people at the beginning. Uh, New Jersey's an early state, so we're, we're taking it very seriously. Yeah, you're welcome. So, you know, I, I've, uh, I've made many appearances here over the last year, and uh, we'll continue to do so. Yes? Um, I was wondering, um, for most people who hear you speak and who, who get a chance to meet you, you seem so common sense, so smart, like you're making so much good sense about what could solve so many problems. Could you say a few words about the media and why you're not taken more seriously? 
but I mean, you're taken very seriously by people who know you. But, and I sort of wanted to tie this to your sense of humor. You got to have a good sense of humor, watching uh, the way that the big media covers you, because it's just no justice. People well, should know everything about well, the media. Anybody. You know, the, the airwaves belong to the public. I'm one candidate for president who understands that. Because I taught courses in media and politics at Case Western Reserve. One of the things in my course I taught was the FCC Act of 1934. It says that the electronic broadcast media uh, must serve in the public interest, convenience, and necessity. The airwaves belong to the people. It don't belong to, you know, NBC, CNN, Fox, uh, and all the networks. Airwaves belong to the people, so they're supposed to operate those airwaves in the interest of the, of the general public. Now, that, that, that mission has been out the window, okay? So do I expect, look, I don't expect uh, uh, anybody in the electronic broadcast media to do anything but what they're doing. Now, if people look at it and say that I'm not being treated fairly, they have to draw the conclusions based on what I stand for. Right. When you have someone who stands for peace, when you have someone who stands for a full employment economy, who challenges these trade laws, who, who challenges the oil companies holding on the economy, who challenges the insurance companies, we're the advertisers. Hello? I mean, you know, you're talking about, I mean, I'm challenging the way the system's put together, even though my views are mainstream. Exactly. Everything that I say relates to the concerns of the American people. So if people want a president they can call their own, they'll vote for me. But first they have to find out about me. Exactly. Uh, yes. Uh, a lot of your answers today revolved around corporate power and how we need to keep that in check. And um, it seems to me that um, corporations have obtained their power sort of under the table via this legal construct called corporate personhood. Yeah, I know. 19, 1897 you, or something, Santa Clara County Supreme right, Court. Right, right. So uh, I guess my, my initial question is, are you familiar with the international movement to abolish corporate person? Right. Look, uh, corporations have assumed extraordinary power in our country. One of the reasons is because we have a campaign finance system that enables them to, through their officers and their attorneys and their accountants and employees, to be able to put money in on behalf of candidates. Uh, obviously, we need to change the constant in the, in the uh, constitutional amendment that would essentially outlaw all, uh, all uh, corporate contributions and would have a public finance. That's what we need. We need a public financing system. Beyond that, you know, if we have if we have real regulatory controls in our economy, uh, corporations would uh, be treated in a way that uh, uh, that that would force them to adhere to law. But we don't have that. What we have is a system where all the wealth is going to the top, right. and corporations have more power than ever. They have more power than than large groups of people. They have more power than, in some ways, the United States of America is constituted by the Congress and by their, uh, uh, and, 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 and as representing the American people themselves. Now, I can tell you, as President of the United States, I can't be bought, I can't be bossed, I can't have any interest coming up to me and saying, this is what you have to do because they gave you money. I don't even think of those things. Well, my, my point is, though, that no state ratified a corporate personhood amendment to the Constitution. I mean, the Supreme Court sort of um, created this anti-natural law construct. Yeah, I think the just I think this is a word for Justice Department to look into uh, the um, uh, the implications of that. Uh, I'm certainly willing to look at it. I, I, any other questions? I want to take the students here. Yes. Uh, 